All right, more watchmen are now coming forward and warning the West, including America, about the judgment that could be coming if there is not a genuine move of repentance. Let's get after it today. The following program is brought to you by friends and partners of End Time Headlines. All right, guys, I want to thank you guys for joining the program today. Again, this is End Time Headlines News and Headlines from a Prophetic Perspective. I am your host, founder, and voice of End Time Headlines, Ricky Scaparo. And listen, if you're new to the broadcast, first time joining us, you're listening, you're watching, any whatever uh, platform you're on that you can comment under, please do me a favor, let me know in the comment section below that you are new. We want to welcome all of our partners, our subscribers, our viewers, our listeners, you guys on a visual platforms, you guys on Apple, on Spotify. Uh, I want to thank you for coming on this uh, Monday, December 4th. We've got a very important message I want to get to you tonight. Again, this is going to be a very sobering message, but it's a much needed message. Um, before we do that, again, I want to encourage you, if you've not downloaded our free app, please go to your Apple store, your Android store, or under the description of this video, there is a link that says download our free app. All you got to do is go there, click on that link, and it's going to take you to a page. Again, depending on which device you have, click on the link that is appropriate to you uh, and that relates to you. Then when you download our free app, hit yes to push notifications, and you're going to be good to go. You're going to get every headline, and you're going to get every podcast and update like you have here and you're listening to tonight. So, and again, please also hit that like button, that share button. This is what's going to push our material out there on these uh platforms so that other viewers like yourself can see and hear the word of the Lord as well. So guys, um, this past week, uh, I came across two videos that I want to share with. We're going to show you some snippets. We're not going to show you the whole video. Um, but these, uh, these recent messages came from two, what I call two modern day watchmen. Now I, you know, as many of you guys know, I include myself as a watchman. I, I believe the, the Lord has called me to be a watchman, one of the many watchmen on the wall in uh, uh, today, uh, in 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 the church today, uh, and this is a this is a heavy load of responsibility on my shoulders. I'm going to give you some scriptures for that, but uh, today I want to share with you. Uh, we're going to share with you a lot of information today, but before we do that, um, I'm going to give you a scripture. Let me give you this scripture first, and then I'll give you a little bit more elaboration on these two uh, watchmen that came out with warnings. Uh, one came first, and then another one right after it came out. Uh, and they, they, these two warnings, these two messages, these two, uh, two urgent calls to repentance are in the same thread and same vein of the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says, out of the testimony of two or more witnesses, let every word be established. And that's why I think, I, I knew I had to come on here today. And I think that the, the reason why this is so important is because of the timing of this, because the, the, the common denominator of the warning and what this is in relation to with the West. So before we do that, go with me to the book of Ezekiel, the book of Ezekiel chapter 33. We're going to be in Ezekiel 33, one through six for you guys that are listening by Apple or by Spotify. Uh, for you guys that are watching the visual of this, I'm going to read reading this from the New King James. Again, this is Ezekiel 33, 1 through 6. Again, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, speak to the children of your people and say to them, When I bring the sword upon a land and the people of the land take a man from their territory and make him their watchman, when he sees the sword coming upon the land, if he blows the trumpet and warns the people, then whoever hears the sound of the trumpet and does not take warning, if the sword comes and takes him away, his blood shall be on his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet, but did not take warning. His blood shall be upon himself, but he who takes warning will save his life. But verse six, if the watchman sees the sword coming and does not blow the trumpet and the people are not warned and the sword comes and takes any person from among them he is taken away in his iniquity 
but his blood I will require at the watchman's hand. So notice here that, again, a watchman, guys, listen, everybody wants to be a watchman or a prophet, but I'm telling you, a watchman has a heavy responsibility because watchmen get words from the Lord. They get messages from the Holy Spirit straight from the throne room of God. And it is a warning. It is a rebuke. It is a correction that comes from the Lord to be given to the people. And many times, especially in today's modern church, these individuals for fear of reputation, fear of persecution, uh, fear of ridicule, fear of losing people, losing money, losing influence, losing their platform, they will never speak that word or they would never even entertain getting up behind their pulpit and speaking this word out or getting on the internet or getting on uh, social media or somewhere in a public eye and giving such a warning from the Lord that would make people uncomfortable, that would charge people to bring repentance, to charge people to enter into a time of fasting and consecration, being set apart and, 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 and a turning from their sin or their wicked ways. So we see here in Ezekiel 33, that the watchman has a responsibility of himself to see what is coming and act accordingly. But he also has a responsibility that he, when he sees disaster coming, calamity coming, the sword coming, whatever it is, when he sees that is coming upon the land, he sees it. He has a responsibility to sound the trumpet to warn the people. I'm going to, again, I'm going to bring this in modern vernacular. He has a responsibility. If he or she has a platform, they must get up on that platform, whether it be YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, whatever their, whatever their outlet is, whatever their pulpit is. If it's, if they, if they're a pastor of a church, they stand behind that, that pulpit. If again, they're an evangelist, they will stand up, they will decree and they will declare the word of the Lord. If they do not, the Bible says their blood, the people's blood, who they fail to warn will come upon their own head. So this is a, this is a strong and powerful, uh, uh responsibility that is given to the watchman. Now, one thing that I have noticed for quite some time now, and many other watchmen will testify to this, is that we as watchmen will get up and we will give these warnings, but only a remnant of individuals will even heed the warning. They will hear it. They will ignore it. They will laugh it off. They will mock it. They will scorn it. Uh, they will, they will just, they will throw it under the rug. They'll sweep it under the rug and they'll, and, uh, and they will not take heed to it. And this is what was going on in Jeremiah's day. Let me read this to you. This is Jeremiah chapter six. Uh, I'm going to pull this up. Jer Jeremiah chapter six, verses 16 and 17. Look what it says here. Thus saith the Lord, stand in the ways and see and ask for the old paths where the good way is and walk in it. Come on, there's a word for the hour right there. Let me let me say that again. Ask for the old paths where the good way is and walk in it. Then you will find rest for your souls. Notice that the Lord's saying here, we don't need, come on, a revision of the gospel. We don't need a revamping. We don't need a restructuring. We don't need a refurbished, repackage. Jesus. Paul said it like this. He said there will come a time when they will be preaching another Jesus. They'll be bringing another gospel. There'll be another spirit. And he talks about he fears that the simplicity because of the simplicity of the gospel that people will be succumbed to this. They will fall to this. Tell me we're not here, guys. We're, we're here right now. Come on, do I have anybody that's watching and listening today that still listens to believes and heeds the word of the real Jesus of the Bible. Come on, not this new age Jesus, not this modern humanistic Jesus, this Jesus that never rebukes, he never corrects, he never brings chastisement, he never preaches on sin, he never preaches on the blood, he never charges anyone to, to, uh, to live a life of sanctification and holiness. I'm talking about the real Jesus of the Bible. Is there anybody else out there or have we all taken the bait? I find it intriguing that here the Lord speaks to Jeremiah and he commands the people 
to look and perceive and look at the look at your past where and 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 go back to the old past and the good way and walk in it. Listen, it produced fruit. It produced results. It brung revivals. It brung awakenings. It come on, it brung legitimate change to people's lives. Is the gospel that you're believing in, the gospel that you're walking in, the gospel that you're preaching, is it producing fruit? Is it producing transformation? Is it changing lives? That's a question you got to ask. He says, if you'll do this, you will find rest for your souls. Let me go back here. Look what he says here. But look, look at the response of the people of Jeremiah's day. But they said, what was the response? We will not walk in it. We don't want the Jesus of the Bible because that Jesus of the Bible makes us uncomfortable. That, come on, that gospel charges us to change. It causes us to be uncomfortable. It, it costs us something. It costs us our lifestyles. It makes us separate from things. It makes us come out from among people and break yokes and sever relationships and leave things behind. And we have to deny ourselves, take up our cross and follow after him. We will not walk in it. Verse 17. Also, the Lord says, I set watchmen over you saying, listen to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, we will not listen. Let me give this to you real quick because I got to get through this message. The people of Jeremiah's day are no different than the people of today. The people of Jeremiah's day, they did not want to hear Come on, they didn't want to hear the real gospel. They didn't want to be changed by the gospel. They didn't want to, they didn't want to lay down their lives for the gospel. Number two, they did not want to hear the word of the Lord through the watchman. They said, yeah, we notice here they, they acknowledged the trumpet being sound. They acknowledged the warning coming from the watchman, but they said, we will not listen to it. We'll turn our ear from what the watchmen are saying. All right. So that leads me to this next point. Uh, I want to say it was probably a month or two ago. Guys, listen, we do like four of these a week. So I can't keep track of when and what message it was. But we, and many of you guys know, if you follow our ministry, you know that I have been sharing with you strong words. I feel like the Lord has put on my heart about what to look for in the coming months. Warnings that are going out, harbingers that, harbingers that are coming and appearing, signs in the sun, moon, and stars. There's all these weird uh, uh, phenomenons going on, anomalies going on, birth pangs are increasing. And I've talked about if there's not a legitimate, genuine move of repentance, that judgment uh, more severity on any level that we've ever seen is coming to America. You guys have heard me preach this. Now, I find it interesting and intriguing that this past week I saw two watchmen, two modern, I call them generals of Bible prophecy in our day. One of them is evangelist Perry Stone, and the other one is Pastor John Kilpatrick. Now, I believe Perry's message was given first, and then literally in the same week, at the end of that week, I saw Pastor John Kilpatrick deliver a message. I'm going to give you snippets from both of these messages we're going we're gonna to talk about this, and I'm going to explain to you why this is heavy, why this is important, and why we better not respond like the people of Jeremiah's day and hear the trumpet blast, hear the warning of the watchman, and turn our ear from it. I am not an alarmist in the sense of always throwing the word urgent, important, must see on any of my telecast programs or YouTube channels. I think people do that way too often simply trying to get you to watch. I am not doing that with this. This is something that happened to me um, on November the 9th, early in the morning, and I knew, come, come as the old expression, uh, heaven, hell, or high water, that I was going to have to share this with the people. First of all, I want you to understand something, that in Scripture, Amos chapter 3 and 7, the reason that the men in the Bible would give warnings over and over to Judea, to Jerusalem, to the Jewish people, the priesthood, uh, and to the nation was because Amos 3, 7 says, sure to the Lord God will do nothing, but he reveals his secret to his servants, the prophets. 
For many, many years, most of you who follow our ministry know that I have had a continuation of dreams about tsunamis striking specifically every coastal area of the United States, West Coast, East Coast, and also from the Gulf of Mexico. I do not go to bed thinking about tsunamis. I do not ask God to show me events concerning tsunamis. As a matter of fact, these dreams often come at a time when I least expect it. On the early morning hours of November the 9th, I had a very unusual dream. In this dream, Pam, my wife, and myself were with a group of uh, people. Some were young couples and some were teenagers. And it's as though we were all joined together. We were talking about the Lord, etc. Suddenly the house began to shake and it was a major earthquake and it actually started moving the foundation of that house. And then, uh, then it subsided for a moment and, I, and a second quake came. Now the thing was there was no breaking up of the house, but there was a shaking of it and there was no one inside the home that was wounded in any way. When I stepped outside, apparently this house was in a coastal area. The water had already come up to the porch and I yelled at everyone and said, oh my goodness, that type of an earthquake was, is going to create a major tsunami that's gonna put all of us in danger. And I received a call and this call was coming from outside, but someone's cell phone was working at that time. And they said, let me tell you where to go. And they told us uh, a location. I don't remember the location in the dream, but the house had a huge safe house in it, had food for such uh, situations like that. And we were trying to figure out how to get through the water that was there to some kind of a vehicle to make it to safety. Well, I kept asking the Lord, as a matter of fact, over the years, I've really inquired of the Lord that I've seen these tsunamis hitting and it's as though one comes and, and shortly thereafter, another one comes and shortly thereafter, another one comes. And it's just, it's just a major disaster. But I've asked why, why would the Lord allow this? What is the reasoning behind it? And I'm going to, I'm going to say, say this, uh, and I know it's going to be very controversial with some people. And as always, you're going to have your critics to cut me down and stab me and backstab me and mock me. But you know what? I'm 64 years of age. And honestly, at the point that I could give a rip, I really. I'm only 46 and I'm already got that attitude. So I don't care. I've been preaching 47 years. I've tried to obey God and I answer to the Lord for what he tells me. And I exactly. don't answer to anybody watching me on television or any uh, so-called watchdog ministry. You'll answer for the things you're saying, just like I will for what I'm teaching. The reason behind this, I want to say something. First of all, there is never a regional, local, national catastrophe of any kind that is random or by chance when it affects the entire nation. And I've often said that even for 9-11, for us not to know the terrorists were planning this, for us not to get the intelligence, somehow the hedge, I'm talking in the United States here, must have been lifted and the enemy... And yes, that's exactly, and that we, I said the same thing. He was permitted temporarily to come in to attack. And the example of that is the entire book of Job. Read it, especially in chapters one and chapters two. And we could, and some could even say the same thing about Israel recently with the Hamas attacks, with what the intelligence of Israel, uh, er, everything they have. And some has even uh, compared 9-11, or excuse me, say compared to, they compared the Hamas attacks in Israel to our 9-11 in America. Again, same thing, like it's almost like a God supernaturally allowed or allowed the hedge to come down. So I thought that was very interesting. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a statement here and I'm going to go to the Bible to prove it. America is in great danger of coming under not a curse or a chastisement, but a complete judgment of God. Now, I'm going to tell you what's happening, and this is the part that'll be a little controversial, but I have to do what the Lord told me to do. Right. Now, I want you to listen to what I'm going to say, because when I woke up on November 9th having this tsunami dream, here's the warning for America. In 1973, the Supreme Court of the United States voted a ruling to legalize abortion on demand. And of course, that caused the opening of abortion clinics and so from 1973 till uh, more recently, in recent time, millions of lives were taken, little boys and little girls that never had the opportunity to live. And I, wanna, I want you to understand something that in Jeremiah 1, uh, I think it's verse 5, God said to Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you 
and ordains you to be a prophet of the nations. This is called the foreknowledge of God. And God has a book of the living, not the book of life. It's a different book where David said in Psalms, you knew me while I was yet being formed. Uh, you knew me, you knew my body parts. You knew what I would look like. And you also uh, uh, marked the number of days I would live. So in the foreknowledge of God, all of those infants that were aborted were sent, their, their eternal spirit was sent into that little body, the moment of conception to grow with the body uh, and their life was taken and God already had a name for them. And I can prove that because God named Samson, God named John the Baptist, God named Jesus. There are times that God would give the name of the child be, when it, before it was conceived, okay? It's the foreknowledge of Almighty God. We don't preach this. We don't, we don't cover this enough. We don't tell our young people of these type of things. It's sad because if you understand what God says, you understand why believers, and it's not conservative versus liberal, why believers who believe this book tell you that shedding the innocent blood of an infant is wrong. You would understand it if you knew what God Come said on. about it. That's my point. We had a reprieve some time back in which the Supreme Court said that they were putting, well, you, you know what happened with that. And so those who believed in the life of a child and pro-life, as they call it, were happy. But now the states, now you hear me, now the states are going to vote to, reverse it. to allow it. And I saw a very, a state that I always thought was a conservative state recently reversed that and said, we want it back. Mm. Now watch, there are some things in scripture that are sin that are sins of the flesh, sins of the mind, sins of the heart, sins of the body. But there are other sins God calls an abomination. abomination. Seven things I hate, those who shed innocent blood. And then when you look at Deuteronomy 21, the land becomes cursed when shedding innocent blood. My point is that the America was given a reprieve by the courts saying, we believe that life is important. But when these states start reversing it, and you know, in November of 2024, it'll be on every ballot, and I will guarantee you the majority of states will reverse it. Reverse it. The yep. majority. And the Lord spoke to me, wow. and I'm gonna tell you, I'm not afraid Listen. to say this because I saw 9-11 five years before it happened. I saw that um, oil rig explosion right off of Louisiana, called a pastor in Baton Rouge, told him it was gonna happen, and a year and a half later, it happened. And I've seen things that have absolutely happened. So that's why I'm not afraid to give you this warning and go on record. I will go on record telling you this. If we reverse and start allowing shedding innocent blood again, we are in trouble from coast to coast. All right, guys. <clears throat> now that's a warning from Perry Stone. Again, let's recap this real quick because then I'm going to show you to John. I'm going to take you to John Kirkpatrick. Again, the Lord has shown Perry this is coming from his own mouth that he saw multiple tsunamis, multiple uh, situations or disasters, earthquakes that produced a tsunamis on all coast of America. And he said this was contingent upon if our nation reverses what the Supreme Court ruling put in motion state by state, if they reverse it, to legalize what God calls an abomination, then God will remove his hand of protection, such as 9-11, and we will see disaster like we have never seen in this nation. I mean, this, this is absolutely terrifying, friend. Now, I don't know how you're going to receive that. And again, and I'm going to go back to what Ezekiel and Jeremiah said. In their days, when the prophets and the watchmen warned about these disasters, there was two groups of people. There was a small group of individuals that heeded the warnings, but the majority would hear the trumpet blast. They would hear the watchman's call. They would hear the watchman's warning, and they would scorn it. They would mock it. They would ridicule it, and they would ignore it. So again, what side of the camp are you on? That's what you're going to have to decide. You know, because every because there's going to be people out there, we're going to get emails, we're going to get messages, and they're going to say, well, I don't like Perry Stone. I don't like John Kirkpatrick. I don't, I think they're a heretic. I think they're a And they're going to find some way. And again, and they will totally ignore all this stuff. 
So listen, you may not like Brother Perry and you may not like Brother John Kilpatrick, but listen, if you listen to, to Brother Ricky and you listen to our, our ministry, we have warned you of the same thing. How many more harbingers do we have to show you? How many more disasters do we have to talk about? So let me get to the guys. We're only halfway through this. Now I want to give you, we're going to jump over here to John Kilpatrick and I'm going to show you some stuff from him. We're going to give you some clip uh, snippets from his message. Again, I'll put down in the link below both videos so you can watch the full message. Cause there's no, if we played the full message, guys, this would be a three hour podcast. We can't do that. So we're, I'm trying to pull some stuff out. Uh, again, you can go back and listen to the full messages in the description below. All right. Now, again, you think about what Perry just preached and what his warning was. And then literally within the same week, uh, Pastor John Kilpatrick releases this word. Uh, now, again, I could be wrong on these as far as when they were actually delivered, because I know I believe if if and I stand to be corrected on this, but I, le I believe this message was actually delivered in-house uh, in John's uh, church uh, maybe a week or so before it actually went on and they put it on YouTube. So if that's the case, then the timing of these messages may have been in the same within within days apart, which makes this even more intriguing. So nevertheless, let's get you into this sermon. I want to show you some snippets here. Now think about, again, before we get started, think about what we just heard from Perry. And now listen to this. The Bible tells us that the land, I want to talk about this for a while, about the earth, the land, the land can mourn. Hosea said, hear the word of the Lord, you children of Israel, for the Lord has a controversy with the inhabitants of the land, because there's no truth, no mercy, and no knowledge of God in the land. In other words, what, the, what he's saying here is the land is languishing. The land was meant to work with man. But when Adam sinned, the land even turned against Adam and wouldn't do what Adam told it to do. Weeds came, thorns came, thistles came. And it said, because there is no truth or mercy or knowledge of God in the land, the land is languishing, it's mourning. The land is actually mourning by swearing. And, and by the way, guys, that's Romans 8. Go read Romans chapter 8, what Paul wrote. He talks about the earth is in travail. It's groaning. It's moaning. Why? Because of sin, corruption, iniquity, and because it's crying out to be transformed. It's crying out for the renovation, for God himself to return and to make all things new again. Lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out and blood touches blood. Therefore shall the land mourn. And everyone that dwelleth therein shall languish with the beasts of the field and with the fowls of heaven, and the fish of the sea shall also be taken away. So there's three points I want to make about this. The things that we do on the earth, the things that we do, the sins that people commit has an extraordinary effect, a cause and effect, and an impact on the land. Second thing is the land manifests God judgment because of man's sin. The earth will manifest God's judgment because of man's sin. Three, land can be healed, it can be cleansed, and it can be made whole. Now there's four sins that the Bible mentions that defiles the land. This is very the important. Bible mentions these four and they're powerful sins, and they're all in motion right now. That's why we're living in the last days. Everything is accelerated. That's why the Lord said to me, tell the people that the earth is going to start manifesting because sin is increasing. Mm. The end of the age is coming. The tribulation is trying to begin. The tribulation can't begin yet because the church is still here, but things are increasing. Lawlessness, theft, Death, you know, killing, ab abortion, abominate, abominable sins are increasing. But the Bible said there's four sins that has a major effect on the land. Today, there's a spirit of strong delusion in America. People think they can worship another God besides our God. And people are led to believe that there's another way to the Father other than through Jesus Christ. This is not the case. You'll be cursed if you believe that. 
There is only one God. There is only one Jehovah. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He had a son, and his son's name is Jesus Christ, and he's the Savior of all mankind. There is no other way to the Father save by Jesus Christ. So be careful, the Lord is saying here. Don't be caught up in detestable lies and believe a lie and be damned. The second sin that the Bible said will cause the earth to quake. The second sin that the Bible said will cause the earth to convulse and to vomit is the sin of immorality, fornication, and homosexuality. Leviticus 18 discusses sexual sins, which includes homosexuality and bestiality. Look what it says about nations that defile themselves with sexual perversions. This is what God said. Now listen to me. I'm not preaching John Kilpatrick. I'm preaching the word of God to you. And I don't know if you still have an ear to hear the word of God, but if you have an ear to hear the word of God, you better pay attention. And those of you that's watching me by television, and those of you that's listening to me by live streaming, you better have an ear to hear what I'm saying. This is not something that a denomination or a church or a preacher come up with. This is the word of God. Amen. And I say this with a calm spirit and helping you to understand we're gonna to have to come to grips with this one way or the other. So listen to what it says. God said, do not defile yourselves with any of these ways because this is how the nations that I'm going to drive out before you became defiled. Even the land, he said, was defiled and I punished them for their sins. Mm. And the land vomited out, the land vomited out its inhabitants. Everybody look at me and listen to me. God said the land vomited the people out, caused them to have to evacuate. They couldn't stay on that land. For whatever reason, they had to evacuate. God caused the land to cause the people to spew them out where they couldn't come back. God said, if that's the way you're going to treat me, I'm God. When there was nothing, I created the earth. I created you out of nothing, and I put you on the earth and gave you a shot at life. And this is how you're going to treat me? And you're going to worship other gods, and you're going to take your body that I gave you as a temple of the, th the things of God, and you're going to pervert it? Come on. With anal sex? And having sexual relations, men with men and women with women. This is how you know. God said, that land will vomit you out and you won't be able to return. And God called it an abomination. Yes, I want to tell you, sir. quit being so cotton-picking religious. Come quit on. being so politically correct. This is the word of the Lord and we had better pay attention to it. I said we better pay attention to it. What I'm talking about today, what my subject is, is the land. With all this stuff going on about trans and the schools teaching kids, little kids, about trans and you're not really a female, you're not really a male, and all this stuff is happening, it's increasing the sin in the land and the earth is gonna convulse. And Come it's going on. to convulse in ways you can't begin to imagine. Here's what the Lord said to tell you. He said there's going to begin to be things happening that the earth has never seen, but it's still going to be convulsing and vomiting, but it's going to be things the earth has never seen. And they're going to say, what does this mean? I don't even know what it means because I haven't seen it either. But the Lord said it will be on people's lips. Wonder what this means. Wow. But you're going to see it and you're going to remember this message. Listen. If I preach this in many churches this morning, half the crowd would get up and walk out. True. You know why? Because they believe in the culture more than they believe in the Bible. Yes, sir. Exactly. Yep. Well. Yeah. You say, I don't like you, Brother Kilpatrick. Well, if you'll hang around, I have some better sides to me. Listen to this, listen to this. The third reason that the earth will convulse and vomit is because of the shedding of innocent blood. The earth is vomiting them out, why? Because of the shedding of innocent blood. 
the cities are being vomiting, they're vomiting out the inhabitants. And what you're gonna see in America, and I want you to hear me because I'm telling you the truth, the cities that continue on with this killing of the, the innocent and shedding of innocent blood, when they kill these babies and their blood is crying out, oh Jesus, oh God, help me. And God hears them crying out from the ground. God is about to raise up and he's about to bring judgment in a way that you can't begin to even understand. The earth is crying out. The earth is mourning and the earth is travailing. The earth is groaning because of the shedding of innocent blood. Wow. And homelessness. I'm gonna go if you, an earth has broken covenants. You will remember it. Number four. And this is the last one. Number four is broken covenants. The Bible said the earth is defiled by its people. They have disobeyed the laws, violated the statutes, and broken the everlasting covenant. Scriptures is even on the liberty bell to proclaim liberty throughout the land to all the inhabitants thereof. America must not forget the Judeo-Christian foundation and the covenants that were made with God when our nation was founded. If we forget, God said the land will vomit and the land will spew you out if you break covenant with God. One covenant I wanna draw your attention to and I close. The Bible says this in Genesis, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, said unto thy seed have I given this land from the river of Egypt the Nile River to the River Euphrates. You'll see it on the screen. There it is. Right there, the Nile River in blue, Euphrates River. God said, I'm giving you all this land. That includes Jordan, most of, uh, parts of Iraq, Syria, and even parts of Saudi Arabia. And I quit drawing the line because we don't know how far that way the line goes. Hmm. But we do know it goes from the river of Nile into the Euphrates River. That's land they haven't gotten back yet. Somebody says, do you think this Psalms 83 is the war that's happening there right now? I think it very well could be. I think it's still developing. I think it's still simmering on the stove. I think it's possible. So the Bible said, the same day the Lord made a covenant with Abram. He made a covenant with Abram, a covenant. Right. God made a covenant. And when God makes a covenant, it's forever. And he said, unto your seed, Abram, that's the Jews, have I given this land from the river of Egypt to the great river Euphrates. I will make of you a great nation, Abram, and I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless you. I will curse them that curse you and in you shall all the families of the earth be blessed. This is direct correlation to how God treats people. He said, I'll treat them badly that treat you badly, and I'll treat them wonderfully that treat you wonderful. So God watches over his land, and he watches over Israel. When a nation mishandles Israel, and I want to just stop and say this. I want everybody to look at me and listen to me carefully. Listen to this, guys. Oh, my God. October the 7th. Innocent blood. I'm saying this in context of what I'm preaching this morning. Innocent blood. Cutting babies' heads off. Killing little children's parents before their very eyes and the kids hiding out in the cabinet for 16 hours before they're rescued. Taking hostages. Shooting people. Raping women. Such unthinkable behavior and that happened right there in Israel I don't think that Hamas has counted the cost of the hell that's coming to them and I'm not talking about necessarily through the IDF I'm talking about from the hand of God yes sir because that's God's land his eyes are on it from the beginning of the year to the ending of the year that was innocent blood that was shed. They did nothing to nobody. There was already a ceasefire. So here's what I want to say to you in regard to what's going on in Israel right now and what's going on in Gaza and what may be about to go on in the other nations right around Israel. Just keep your station tuned 
because with that being shed, innocent blood being shed in Israel, we're going to see the retribution of God, and it's not going to be pretty. All right, guys, so I wanted to show you those. Again, there was a lot shaved off of that, so I want to encourage you to go back, watch the full messages of those warnings from these two watchmen of God. Put, put these together with what Brother Ricky has been warning you about. Now I want to show now keep all this in mind, all of this in mind. And I want to show you a couple articles that I found that you think about the severity of the warning that's going forth from heaven, from God, from the Holy Spirit, from the watchman. You think about this and look at some of these headlines. For example, a very popular, this has been out for years and years, even when I was a teenager, I remember seeing this uh, Cosmopolitan magazine. Um, it's a magazine that really caters more to teenagers, uh, younger people. Recently, they promoted satanic abortion to young women. Let me say that again. Cosmopolitan magazine promotes satanic abortion to young women. Cosmopolitan magazine promotes a satanic ritual for terminating unwanted babies. This might be the most satanic thing I've ever seen. With a mission statement that says they empower young women to be who they are and want to be. And their focus is to propel them into their fun and fearless future. This uh, magazine, which deems itself to be the largest young women's media brand in the world, recently published an article back on the 16th of November titled, quote, the satanic abortion clinic that, uh, peed off pretty much everyone and might beat the bands away. The article boasts the reputation of the satanic temple, which provides support to this, to the so-called Samuel Alito mom's satanic abortion clinic. The abortion clinic was purposely named to stoke outrage and take a shot at the Supreme court justice, Samuel Alito, who all authored, excuse me, authored the opinion that ultimately overturned Roe v. Wade. So I want you to think about this for a second. So here's Cosmopolitan Magazine who are taking direct shots at the Supreme Court justice who had a direct hand in the overturning of Roe v. Wade. And now they published an article on the, um, on satanic abortions. And let me read on a little bit more. The Cosmopolitan article, according to The Blaze, conceded that Alito's mother was a school teacher and was thrilled with the birth of her son. The article went on and asked, quote, it's unlikely that Rose ever considered abortion for herself because a few years before she passed away, she told reporters she opposed it. But what if her circumstances had been different, if her own life had been endangered by the pregnancy or if the fetus had a fatally a, a fatal anomaly or if Rose simply hadn't been ready for a child? What if she'd had a choice and access to safe legal abortion care? The Alito matriarch died in 2013. Now guys, I want to show you, this is, this is actually from the Cosmopolitan Instagram page. This is not something that we fabricated or made up. This is the, you're looking at a screenshot of the Cosmopolitan, and you can see them up here, 4.3 million followers. Look what this, look, this is what they posted on Instagram. So how does a satanic abortion ceremony even work? Question mark. Patients. Of all faiths are welcome at Samuel Alito's mom's satanic abortion clinic in New Mexico, along with medical counsel TST, that's the satanic temple, offers free ceremonial support to everyone. Abortion ceremonies are totally optional and customizable. Here's a sample, or excuse me, here's a simple one TST recommends. First, Find a quiet space. Bring a mirror if you can. Just before taking the medication, gaze at your reflection and focus on your personhood. Home in on your intent, your responsibility to you. Take a few deep, relaxing breaths. And when you're ready, read the following tenet aloud. Quote, one's body is invaluable, subject to one's own will alone. Again, direct defiance of God. Take the medication and immediately afterward recite. So these are, they're reciting this demonic language, this demonic ritual. 
they go on to say that the, that that individual who's committing this act of shedding of innocent blood should recite quote beliefs should conform to one's best scientific understanding of the world. One should take care never to distort scientific facts to fit one's beliefs. Later, once the procedure is complete, return to your reflection. Focus again on your personhood, your power in making this decision. You hear all this, the, the demonic overtones here. Complete the ritual by, here we go, reciting personal affirmation. Quote, by my body, my blood, by my will, it is done. This is absolute blasphemy. It's not your body. Come on, that's the Bible says you are the temple of the Lord. You were bought and paid for by him. The, the blood that was put in your body was from God himself, and it has a voice. And it was the will of God that you, the fact that you're alive was God's will. And it was his will alone. Okay, let me go to the next step. Mirror or mantras or not, the satanic temple's point is that your abortion should focus on your anatomy, excuse me, autonomy in making this decision. Patients can include as many loved ones as they'd like or light candles or even dress up. Yes, because we've got to look really nice when we shed the innocent blood. Whatever makes them feel empowered. Again, Friends, tell me, tell me that America is not ripe for the judgment of God. So I don't care. Listen, you may disagree. You may have a personal vendetta against, or you personally don't like John Kilpatrick or Perry Stone, but guys, their warnings and what they're saying is straight from the word of God. Come on, you, you got to admit to that. And to say that America is not ripe for judgment, then my friend, you don't know the Bible and you don't know the word of God. Here's another report. Catholic Women's College is now, according to a new report, is going to accept men who identify as women. Let me say that again. Perhaps maybe someone watching or listening is of the Catholic faith. You never know. But Catholic Women's College, a, a, a particular women's college of the Catholic faith are now accepting men who identify as women. According to the report, a prominent all-women's Catholic college in Indiana, so this is in the state of Indiana, I used to live there for many years, says it will begin accepting biological men who identify as women as part of a new policy that is drawing pushback from the head of the region's Catholic diocese. Uh, the president of St. Mary's College in Notre Dame, Indiana, pointed in an email last week to a board-approved non-discrimination policy that, quote, considers admission for undergraduate applicants whose sex is female or who consistently live and identify as women. According to Catholic News Agency, they reported on the controversy that according to its website, St. Mary's tradition of empowering women with excellent academic programs and spiritual support began with our founding in 1844 by the Sisters of the Holy Cross. According to a spokesman for the college, Lisa Knox, she told Catholic News Agency that, quote, in today's environment, we need to clarify our, quote, non-discrimination policy to be more inclusive. There it is. When the college, uh, when the college's board of trustees approved an update to the school's policy in June, it included a shift in our language about who we will consider for admission as well as about who we will support employees across the the continuum of gender expression. The college reflected carefully on its role as a Catholic institution and what it means to be inclusive, uh, to be an inclusive educator of women and society today. Kevin Rhodes, who is a bishop of the Fort Wayne South Bend Diocese, criticized the new policy. He said he founded it, quote, disappointing that I, as bishop of the diocese in which St. Mary's College is located, was not included or consulted on a matter of important Catholic teaching. Wow. To call itself a women's college, quote, and to admit male students who consistently live and identify as women suggests that the college affirms an ideology of gender that separates sex from gender and claims that sexual identity is based on the subjective experience of the individual. This is according, again, to the bishop of the Fort Wayne South Bend Diocese. 
He went on to say that according to Catholic or according to the Catholic News Agency, he went on to say that, quote, this ideology, this ideology is at odds with Catholic teaching. Then we have this piece from the Rolling Stone, which is very interesting, where the the new the newly elected speaker of the House of Representatives, Mike Johnson, b- drew all kinds of backlash and one piece really did a good work of smearing him was Rolling Stone. No, no shock there. But they quoted him saying that, quote, depraved America deserves God's wrath. And what Mike Johnson was talking about was, again, it's on the same thread of what we're talking about because of the sins of America, because what we have affirmed, what we have promoted, what we what we have allowed, what we have um, legislated. The, this is what he's talking about. This we are committing the same sins as the 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 nations that were in the times past, and which God brought the judgment of the Lord upon them, and they cease to exist. A new report by Rolling Stone looks into House Speaker Mike Johnson's views on American culture, which he calls quote dark and depraved. In an October prayer call just last month with the World Prayer Network, weeks before he became Speaker of the House. Johnson talked about an America facing a civilizational moment. The only question is, is God going to allow our nation to enter a time of judgment for our collective sins, which his mercy and grace have held back for some time? Or is he going to give us one more chance to restore the foundations and return to him? We will not be able to do it without the Lord's help because there's so the flesh is and the mistrust and the the sin and everything is so great here that we this is going to have to bring people to their knees and i look i I believe god is about to do something so guys here's the bottom line again i I want to propose this question to you i want to ask you this question i've asked several weeks ago and i probably asked it more than one segment again how many more watchmen have to sound the alarm How many more harbingers do we got to see? How many warnings are coming out there? How many disasters have to happen? How many calamities have to transpire before we wake up, before we get the, get the understanding that God is, that the time is running out and that God has given us this small reprieve to repent again, second Chronicles 7, 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves in prayer and turn from their sins and wicked ways, then shall I heal, hear from heaven, and then shall I heal their land. So folks, listen, I I wish I could come to you today and I could tell you, you know, I, I don't have a formula. I don't have an answer of how that America can get to this place where we would repent, where we we would be like the city of Nineveh and from the greatest to the lead, least that we would find ourselves in a, in a state of repentance and we would turn from our sins. It's I, I, honestly, I wish I had the faith. I'm just being honest with you as a human being, as a, as a man of God. I wish I had the faith to believe that we as America would, would call a, a national day of not prayer, but of repentance. But I just don't, in my flesh, I'm just telling you, in my flesh, I can't see that happening. I just don't see that happening with any current leadership that we have and even, even coming up. I don't know. I don't even know. Even if your favorite politician was to win the office of president in, in next year in 2024 in that election, if we even make it to that, I don't even know if the election of that individual, whoever that may be, I just don't see this, guys. So what I'm saying is my hope is not in a candidate. It's not in a political leader. My hope and faith is in God alone. I believe, listen to me, here's my hope. Just like God, God took care of his people all through history. When judgments and calamities came upon nations, it came upon lands, it came upon leaders because of the sins, the iniquities, the abominations. God always made a separation. He made a distinction between those who served him and those who did not. If he did it in the time of Egypt, he did it in the time of Ahab and Jezebel. He did it in the time of 
um, Rahab the harlot. He did it in the time of Sodom and Gomorrah. He did it in the days of Noah. Then, my friends, I am not worried or concerned that God is not going to take care of those who are in covenant with him, those who are born again, those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life in the registry of heaven. Come on. Do you believe that today? So listen, I want to leave you with that hope today. My hope is not in America. It's not in a politician. My hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I believe that if he said it in his word, he is faithful to accomplish it until the day of redemption, whatever that looks like. Okay. So again, everybody's going to have different theological views of the rapture, no rapture, the uh, uh, pre-trip, mid-trip, post-trip. The bottom line is I want to pull us all together, depending on regardless of what your theological uh, opinion is and the time into this and that and this. If you are born again, if you are in covenant with Jesus Christ, it's time to put our faith and trust in him and him alone. And we have a responsibility and come on. And that is to warn others that come on, time is running out and that this thing is about to wrap up. The trumpet is about to blast, whatever that looks like. Come on. The voice of the archangel is about to shout. Come on. The heavens are about to split. The lightning is from the east to the west. The son of man is about to return and he's about to come back as king of kings and Lord of lords. And because we have just a short time until that takes place, we have to come on labor and continue to labor until he comes. So what does that look like? You got to keep witnessing. You got to keep showing that, sowing that seed, swinging that sickle, bringing in that harvest, leading them to Christ, doing everything you can because our time is running out. So listen, endtimeheadlines.org, endtimeheadlines.com. Again, don't forget to download our free app available on Apple and Android devices. Again, get it today. Hit yes to push notifications and you're going to be good to go with everything that we put out there and everything that's new, our content. So again, guys, don't forget to do that again you can pick it up in the description of this video you guys are listening by audio just go to your play store whatever that looks like for you today listen if you're watching this today you're listening today and by some chance you don't know the lord you're away from god we want to give the holy spirit an opportunity to work in your life we want to give him an opportunity he wants to come on the bible says that behold i stand at the door and knock he's knocking at the door of your heart the, the, there is no doorknob on the outside. The doorknob's on the inside. It's you. You have the responsibility to open that door and allow the Lord Jesus Christ to come in through the Holy Spirit to live in your life, work through in your life, and set up, come on, a relationship and establish it with you. So why don't you give him that opportunity today? Come on, he's knocking on your door right now. He, the Holy Spirit's convicting you. He's convicting you. you. Come on, maybe your heartbeat, your heart is picking up pace. Your hands are sweating a little bit. You can feel the conviction of the Lord. Just yield to him today. The Bible says to repent. On the day of Pentecost, when, when the Holy Ghost was poured out in the upper room, Peter stood up and the men said, what must we, the Bible says they were cut at the heart. They were convicted and they said, what must we do? And Peter stood up and said, repent and turn from this perverse and wicked generation. Come on, don't be judged with this wicked and perverse generation. Do the right thing right now. Repent of your sins. Put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Come on, and you, th this will be the one decision you will never regret. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask that Lord, you would have your way. I pray that you would draw people to repentance. You said no man can come to the Father unless he come through the Son and the Holy Spirit draws them to you. And we thank you today that lives are being being changed. Lives are being born again. Lives are being restored. I thank you that backsliders are coming back in Jesus name. And father, we continue to do what we're called to do. We continue to pray. We continue to repent. We continue to stand in the gap and we continue to watch as well as be ready and warn others that soon your return is at hand. And you told us in Luke 21, 28, when we begin to see all these things coming to pass, to look up and lift up our heads because our redemption is drawing near. Come on, amen and amen. Listen, guys, 
Uh, if this ministry is a blessing to you, again, a consistent source of information, blessing, encouragement, equipping. We want to give you an opportunity to support this ministry, partner with our ministry. You can do that two different ways. You can give electronically through the app. That's the easiest way. Or, or go to the main website, intimeheadlines.org, intimeheadlines.com. Or you can give by check or money order right there on your screen. You can make it out to End Time Headlines. That's going to be P.O. Box 1391, Monroe, Georgia, 30655. So, guys, we're going to sign off for tonight. Again, don't forget to share this, like this, send this out so that you can get the word out. Uh, this, this is a very urgent warning right now, and we need to get this word out here. So, until tomorrow night, may the Lord bless you, may he keep you, and may his countenance shine upon you. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you for listening to the End Time Headlines podcast. We pray that you've been blessed and equipped by today's message. For more information about how you can help partner with our ministry, please visit endtimeheadlines.org.